Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the child and dependent care credit. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a personal as well as a professional level. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you do create one. Facebook account. Please, if you do have one, like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level. I like to get to know my viewers on a personal level. My YouTube is the most important part because this is where I house all my lectures. So it's very important that you subscribe and I would appreciate it if you like the recording, share them, put them in playlist, let others know about them this way. Other people can benefit. This is my Twitter account and on my website, I do have all my courses recorded, all my courses listed by course and organized by chapter. Let's start with the child tax credit. What's the child tax credit? Simply put, if you have a child, you'll get a tax credit. And this is very family friendly tax credit. The, the credit is $2,000 per child and $500 if you have a non-child dependent. It's a dependent, but non-child. Now, what is, what is considered a child? They have to be under the age of 17, US citizen, and claim as your dependent. So they are your dependent. Now, bear in mind, the child tax credit phase out at AGI that exceeds 400,000 for married filing jointly or 200,000 for other taxpayer. This is great. I mean, this is this is very family friendly child tax credit. I do take advantage of it. But there you go. So, you know, my income is not above 400,000. Um, <laughs> I don't mind if it is. I don't want the credit if it was, but it's not. <laughs> so uh, so I do I, I do uh, take this child tax credit. Also, is it refundable or non-refundable? Well, this one is both. The child tax credit is partially refundable up to 1,400 per child. So it could be refundable up to 1,400, but no more than 15% of your earned income in excess of 2,500. So it cannot be more than 15% of your earned income that's more than 1,500 if, you know, if it's not 1,400, okay? Uh, let's take a look at an example. D and E are married, file a joint return, and claim dependency exemption for their two children, ages five and six. They're below, below the underage of 17. They also claim Elaine, 18, I'm sorry, for child tax credit, Elaine, Erlene is out from a previous marriage as a dependent. D and E combined, AGI is 68. What's their child tax credit? Simple. They have two kids, and each one will get $2,000. 2,000 times two, that's... 4,000. That's 4,000. Pretty straightforward. Let now, let now let's take a look at dependent care credit. The dependent care credit is if you happen to be working or if you happen to be taking care of a dependent or spouse who's physically or mentally incapacitated, not able to take care of themselves, then the government said you can get a credit for the expenses that you incur. So let's take a look at the details of it. But this is the, this is the idea. So if you want to put your child in a... In a, in a um, in a, uh, in a child care service center, then it's going to cost you money. The government said that's fine. We'll give you some credit, assuming you are working, assuming you meet certain qualifications. So the first thing you want to know is that the, the, the this credit is not refundable. So it's not like the child tax credit, partially refundable. General qualification for the credit, you must have employment-related care cost. Employment means you are employed. If you are not working, if one person not working, forget about this credit. Why? Because if you're not working, you're supposed to be taking care of your child. So if you are working, then then it's a different story. Okay? For a dependent, they must be under the age of 13 or a dependent or spouse who's physically or mentally in, incapacitated. Incapacit <laughs> or a dependent or spouse who's physically or mentally cannot take care of themselves and who lives with a taxpayer for more than half of the year. The credit amount is the eligible cost, care cost, times an applicable percentage. We'll see soon. So this percentage, I would like, you know, you will see how we come up with this percentage. It's given to you. Okay. Applicable percentage rates range from 25, 20 to 35%, depending on your adjusted gross income. Don't worry, we'll look at the table soon. Married taxpayer must file a joint return to obtain the credit. So if you're married filing separately, that credit is gone. Eligible care cost defined as cost of care for care of qualified 
individual with a taxpayer home or outside the home. Whether you are take, you are paying for child care inside the home or outside the home, that's that's fine. Okay. If outside the home, physically or mentally not capable of, of themselves, dependent or spouse must spend at least eight hours a day within a taxpayer home. So if you are paying for something outside the home, that individual will have to be at the home for at least eight hours. Child care payment to a relative are eligible for, for the credit unless the relative is a child and under the age of 19. So the child cannot be under the age of 19 for the care. So if you paid your son or daughter that's age 18, then I'm sorry, you cannot get, get the credit. Amount of cost that qualify is the lesser of actual cost or 3,000 for one qualifying individual and 6,000 for more for two or more. So what's the the cost? The cost is if it's if it's more than 3,000, it's 3,000 for one child. If it's more than 6,000, 6,000 for two or more children. Okay. Earn income limitation. Amount eligible for care cost cannot exceed the lower of, not the higher, the lower of. So if you have husband and wife, one is making 30,000 and the other is making 2,500, we're gonna have to, the, the limit is applied to the 2,500. Okay, and you'll see how in a moment. Full-time students or disabled taxpayer or spouse are deemed to have earned income up to the maximum per month limit. So if your spouse is attending college, um, or if your spouse is disabled, then we would assume for every month they are earning two fifty or five hundred dollars. Because remember, you have to have earnings in order to qualify for the credit. So first, you have to have earnings. Then you have to figure out how much did it did, did you incur. Then figure out the percentage. But those are the rules. And the best way to illustrate this because you have two, three, two or three things running around. Let's take a look at it. Wilma is an employed mother for eight-year-old son child. She pays her mother, Rita, 1500 per year to take care of her child after school. Wilma pays her daughter, Eleanor, age 17, $900 for child care during the summer. Of this amount, only the amount paid to her mother is eligible. Okay? Now, what we have to do next is find her AGI, find the appropriate percentage, take 1500 multiply it by the appropriate percentage to find the credit. Don't worry, we'll look at an example. Uh, Nancy, and this is the table that I was telling you about, has two children under age of 13, worked full-time while her husband, Raji, was attending college for 10 months during the year. So one is working, one is, is attending college. They're still in good shape. Why? Because Raji is earning, if they have uh, two children, Raji is earning $500 per month. Raji is deemed to be earning $5,000. So they both have earnings. Nancy earned $22,000 and incurred $6,200 of child care expenses. Yes, she did incur $6,200 for two children, but I'm sorry, the maximum amount they will count is $6,000. Okay, that's the maximum amount for two or more children. Raji is deemed to have earned $500 per month times 10. I already told you $5,000. $5,000 because Nancy and Raja report AGI of 22000 So we, we're going to go to this table and their AGI is between 21 and 23 So their applicable credit is 31%. Okay? Now, now we have to be very careful what's going to happen here. The maximum, although they paid 6200 okay, they paid 6200 the maximum eligible credit is 6 not not the credit, the amount of um, the dependent care cost is the maximum you can use is 6000 However, remember, Raji is the is not making 6000 Raji is also all, only deemed to have earned 5000 Therefore, you cannot even use the 6000 You have to use the lower, the 5000 the lower of the spouse, the income of the lower spouse, which is Raji. Multiply this by 31%, and this is how we find out 1550 Okay, one more time. They paid, they paid and cost six thousand two hundred. Generally speaking, if you have two children, both parents are working, you will start at six thousand. That's the maximum. Then you multiply it by a percentage. But since Raji is only making five thousand, then you are you are subject to this amount of eligible care cost cannot exceed the lower of the taxpayer or the spouse earned income because Raji is only making five thousand. If Raji is making six thousand or more, then they will take six thousand times 31 percent okay and that will be their credit so remember here they paid 6200 they can only use 6000 then they have another limitation raji did not earn 6000 therefore you are limited to the lower number lower earner uh, figures which is raji in this situation let's take a look at another example paul and karen 
um, are married and both are employed. Paul earned 44,000 and Carrie and Karen earned 9,000. Paul and Karen have two dependent children, Sam and Joy, and both under the age of 13. Paul and Karen pay 3,800, 1,900 for each child to Sun, Sunnyside Daycare. And they give us the address. Assume that Paul and Karen file a joint return. What, if any, is their tax credit for the child and dependent care expense? Well, well, they paid only three thousand eight hundred. Therefore, the maximum is six thousand, but they did not pay six thousand, so they paid three thousand eight hundred. Now, what we have to do is figure out um, they make. Well, what's their income? Their income is forty-four thousand plus nine. So notice they both made more. The, each one of them made more than six thousand, so the full amount is eligible. So forty-four uh, plus nine is fifty-three thousand. So let's take. Let, let's go back to the table. Back to the table, um, they're, they're like uh, 50, 50 something, so they're above the, above 43, therefore they're eligible to 20 to twenty percent. So what's gonna happen, we're gonna take, so they are, you know, only 20%, we're gonna take 33,800 times 20%, and that's going to be $760, that's the credit. That's the, the second example. Jim and Mary are married and have two dependent children, under the age of 13. Both parents are gainfully employed and earn salaries as follows. Jim 16,000, Mary 5,200. To care for their children while they're, they're, they work, Jim and Mary paid their mother 5,600. Eleanor does not qualify as their dependent, which is good. So this way, whatever they paid her is qualified for the credit. Compute their child and dependent care credit. Well, they paid, they paid the mother 5,600. However, however, Mary only made 5,200. Therefore, when we go to the table, we're going to take 5,200 times the applicable percentage, not 5,600. Now, if Mary made more than 5,600, we will be able to use the 5,600. Okay? So Mary did not make that much, did not make more 50. 5,600. You remember Raji in the other example? Because Raji only made 5,000. We have to limit our percent, our uh, credit to the lower earner, which is uh, Raji in the other example. So 5,200 times what percentage? Well, Jim made 16,000 and Mary earned 5,200. That's 21,200. 21,200 falls within this range, which is the credit means 31%. Whoops. So we're going to take 5,200 times... 31% and that's going to give them $1,612, which is it's good for Mary that she's working. Um, although she paid her mother more, 400 more than what she earned, okay, but the tax the tax credit helped make, make, make up for uh, Mary's, uh, uh, Mary's shortcoming of $400. And remember, Mary, it's good to work because Mary, you're going to gain experience for the future, which you will earn more. So working is good. Okay. If you have any questions, any comments about this recording, please email me. If you're studying for your CPA or if you're college students, study hard. Study hard. It's worth it. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck.